All right, Tuesday stream. Welcome. It is Tuesday and stream as usual. And today we're getting Bruce. So you can see behind Monotakumi, it's Bruce time. Also, there's a they have Danji and Yuyu chilling in the back. They're vibing, being cool. But the problem is, going into the stream, is that I have not had time yet to watch episode 1 of Will Dress Season 2. And this stream will spoil me on it. So it doesn't feel great. That doesn't feel great. So I would like to not be spoiled on this. But unfortunately, the stream is savage. And they will spoil me. So I'll have to watch the episode afterwards. But today they're revealing Bruce together with uh, support cards for Bruce as well. So that'll be pretty nice. Damn, they made little like little gift bags that they can that are exactly sized for cards. It's like a red packet, yeah. It's the girls. Oh my god, you can get tape with the Vanguard, the the, the female characters from the current Vanguard series. Oh, and you get the boys too. Sip tape. It's crazy. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Oh, new V promos. I wonder what they'll do. Oh, well, would you look at that? They seem to share one of the same effects from the last wave. So this one is Royal Paladin on the left, Murakumo on the right. They share a second skill, which the promos from January had as well. At the beginning of your right phase, if your uh, Vanguard is grade 1 or lower, you can discard this card, look at top 5 of your deck, choose a grade 2 or lower from among them, reveal it, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. So this is the Ride Fixer. And then the Royal Paladin's first skill is, once per turn, Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. Uh, when this unit is boosted and attacks, you can count on one to search your deck for um, one grade two with a different name from this unit and call it to rear. That's pretty good. And then the Murkuma one says, once per turn, back at rear circle, when this unit attacks while being boosted, you can count on one and search your deck for... <laughs> they do the same thing, but this one's more restrictive. So the Murkuma one is like when it's boosted and attacks, count lost one and search your deck. Let me go back for a second. Search your deck for a card that is a different name from this unit, but is the same name as one of your other units. Call it to rearguard circle and shuffle your deck. So they both basically copy a card. They they call. Yeah, it's just twin sword. This is like the new age of amber clones, huh? Also, this standard promo pack is busted. Like, the only bad hits are like the reprints, I guess. But even then, I'm like pretty happy getting the reprints because they're like cool old arts. We have news for Deer Days. Here we go. What is it? All right. So on the second of February, we are having DLC. How far away? Second of February. It's in two weeks. Oh my god. So once, basically, once World is done, we get back in the Deer Days grinder. So yeah, they're adding character skins for Urara and Raika. And then they're also adding, of course, DBTO6 and the three trial decks of Urara, Michiru, and Raika. When's the Raika skin gonna come? When set 7 comes out, I guess? I have a feeling the skins won't be free. I know the trial decks are free. Oh yeah, so it does say like free downloadable content is the trial decks. And then the character sets, I'm pretty sure, will be paid. Ooh, all right, everyone's favorite rarity. Okay, so purchasing the DLC, this, this is kind of, okay, they're trying to make it, they're trying to justify the price. They're trying to justify the price. Basically, if you buy the DLC on top of unlocking the set, you will get one copy of each FR and FFR in the set in Dear Days. You can just craft them, by the way. You could have just crafted them this whole time. And then, of course, they're doing a design contest where you can create your own digital design for a sleeve and submit it before the 26th of February. Anyway, we have a Thursday news. So Thursday, they will reveal the generic cards. They call them cycle cards, which is interesting. But basically, they're going to reveal generic Brankate cards. It's going to be one triple rare and one double rare, which support set orders. So the triple rare will be the Dragon Tree card. The double rare, we have no idea what it would be, but apparently generic. Oh, ah, uh, all right. This doesn't tell me too much, I think. I did see one thing that apparently is like, this shop in the top right apparently is a real card shop. Like, Card Monster or whatever. I don't know if that's their real name, but... Oh damn, there's a new Daybreak Sleeves. I need to watch this episode, but apparently I saw somebody on Twitter showed 
like a picture of this actual store that it's an actual real card shop and apparently they changed their posters to be like the vanguard ones now or something oh they're talking about the peach mountain thing <laughs> danji's surname is momo yama so momo is peach and yama is mountain so his username that he uses as like his handle name his like his, you know, like how I'm different fight, you know, but actually I'm Chris, <gasps> right? So he's, he's Danji, but he's also Peach Mountain, oh my fucking god, <laughs> it's crazy. Ego Jozu, that's right. No, they spoiled me on who wins, you're cringe, you're so cringe, ah, oh, whatever. Ah, uh, it would've been cool to see without knowing this, but whatever, Sag. Why would you show that? Just show more Bruce shots or something, man. This Danji shot. I, I hope... Note to editor who is editing this video. Um, you see this Danji shot? Make, please use it. Alright, so the Furusato thing. Freaking Nakano-san. I have no idea what the hell this is. I, I live in this country and I have no idea what freaking Furusato Nakano-san is. It's some, like, people are really hyped, they're, like, willing to pay, like, insane money for these. All, like, the Furusato Nakano stuff, all the stuff with this lady on it, people are like, oh, I'll pay a hundred bucks, I'll pay a hundred bucks, it's like, who is this? Who is this lady? Alright, so apparently they're gonna uh, uh, approve more pre-orders for this, because it went out of stock that fast, like, I don't know why, like, I need to just ask, I'm gonna ask one of my friends sometime this week and be like, who is this? All right, we're getting support. Forget about Japanese television, bro. Think about cute lady football. So, Diablos girls. Trish. Damn, Trisha? All right. So, Rigor Circle, Guardian Circle. If you are in Final Rush, this unit gets 5k power, 5k shield on both players' turns. Exactly what you thought it'd be? Well... There you go. She's cute. All right, next one. This is a double rear. Diablos Knuckler Jamil. So Mr. Jamil says that more defensive plays. If you are in Final Rush on Rear Guard Circle and Guardian Circle, this unit gets plus 10k power, plus 5k shield. Damn. On both players' turns. So he's 20k rear guard on your opponent's turn. That's really really nice and when he's placed on rearguard circle if your vanguard is diablos vehemans bruce counterblast one soul charge one and choose a diablos named grade three or lower normal unit from your soul and call it to an empty rearguard circle oh is this burst oh it is burst sorry it is bakse oh you're right sorry it is Ikibakse, it's very small. So yeah, it is Final Burst, so... Um, his first skill asks for Final Burst. So basically it says, if you're in Final Burst, on Rigor Token Guardian Circle, he gets plus 10k power and 5k shield. Alright, another card. Oh, there it is, Mr. Diablos Viamans Bruce. So for those that didn't watch the anime yet, or have not seen the card reveal yet from the end of the episode, uh, it says, Vanguard Circle, at the beginning of your battle phase, if all of your units have the Diablos name until uh, the end of your opponent's next turn, you become Final Rush. And if your opponent's Vanguard is Grade 3 or greater, you become Final Burst. So, Ikikase and Ikibakse. And it says that Final Burst is also counted as Final Rush. So if you're in Final Burst, all your effects that care about being in Final Rush will also activate. And the second skill is, when he attacks, if you are in Final Burst, counterblast one and choose one of your columns, and then all of your Diablos named rearguards in that column stand, and for that turn, gain plus 5k power. Yeah, honestly, like, this card is very interesting, because instead of doing five attacks, it's going to be just four, but the fourth one is going to be stronger than before. And just like before, you can't do anything on turn three going first, but going second, um, you can already start restanding stuff. And even, like, you know, going second, plus 10k to a column is pretty good, and things are going to go up in, uh, you know, usability, because, like, all the stuff that you needed to wait for 
suddenly it's like usable immediately. Does that mean stuff like Marjorie can't be used anymore because she's not a Diablos? That's unfortunate. This turns off all of Bruce's orders. Wow, that's... Do they all require him to be final, in Final Rush at the start of turn? Yeah, I think they do. Because... Oh yeah, that's an interesting thing, right? Like, all the effects that you would play in main phase, like orders, that would require you to be in Final Rush, don't work. Because this only activates at the start of the battle phase. This also means that the grade 4 doesn't work with this either, because the grade 4, after you ride over this guy, like the final burst or rush only lasts until the end of your opponent's turn. So when it goes back to your turn again, you're technically, if you ride the grade 4, you're not in final rush. So you lose a turn, basically, which is, it's just basically a new build, like that's, that's we gotta face it. And it's like, I don't know how, like, I, I feel okay about that, because, like, you know, on one hand, it's like, yes, you can't use, like, the grade 4, but this means that a lot of the old Final Rush, like, all the a lot of the old Diablos cards that we just chuck to the, like, the storage, because we're like, oh, this is horrible, because this is just, like, it, there's no space in Bruce, because it's just a random Diablos that, like, gets power, or, like, soul charges or whatever. Like, suddenly, they're good now. So, I wonder what they would do for other archetypes, right? So right now, in terms of remade archetypes, we have Jiva, as in Nirvana. Magnolia has gotten support, but she's not been, like, remade yet, per se. And same with Bastion, he's still, like, priming it up nice and hard using those Twitch Primes, which if you have one, you should be using. And I'm really curious what, uh, what Seraph will do. Oh, and surprise, surprise! We have Unica being revealed next week. Very cool. So it's going to be Sophie's deck being revealed. So uh, going to show the whole ride line and maybe some more. Who knows? We'll see. Funny horn lady. That's right. She's actually human race. So that's also pretty interesting. All right. That's it for the Tuesday stream. So they basically just showed Bruce again and some support cards. The great two is pretty nice. So I'm guessing... I don't know if we'll get another triple rare support for Bruce. I don't think there's any space because Unica takes up a slot. Bruce takes up a slot. Um, the Dragon Tree card will take up a slot. And then probably like a Unica support or something. So I guess there isn't anything else. But yeah, short Tuesday stream. Good stuff. Uh, excited for Unica next week. And uh, also Worlds happening next week too. So make sure you tune into that as well.